Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel. It's a nice rainy day here in my area. Rainy days always present good opportunities to stay indoors or go out in your shop up under an overhang like I am today and work on projects. Today I'm going to get out my net needle, a big spool of cordage, and I'm going to work on making some nets. I'd like to share with you guys this simple process. It can be a little intimidating when you first get started, but once you do get started, you find out it is really just a repetition of the same simple motion over and over. So just a few things you need to know, and you guys can start making your own nets. Of course, for a woodsman or outdoorsman, a net is really limitless in how you can apply it. You can use it to secure a load, you can use it to carry gear, you can use it to make small game traps and even catch fish of course so let's get started i'm going to share with you guys this awesome method to create a net all right so just a quick disclaimer i've actually filmed this video twice now and the first time i was outdoors on location where you saw me film the introductory clip and i wasn't happy with the visual of what was happening i didn't feel like you could really see very well um, when i was Throw in the net and so i decided to come indoors change the lighting in hopes that i would get a better example for you guys so i'm hoping this has all worked out well but let's take a quick look at what you need to actually make your net first of all you need some cordage in this case i'm using number 12 tarred mariner's bank line and that's a good material to make a net that you're going to use it's strong and being tarred it will hold up well to water if you choose to use your net in water um, so it is a good material the knots tie well it's just a good material for net making but you could use other things as well i have made them out of jute and i actually made some earlier out of acrylic yarn so you can do a lot of different um, types of cordage if you like if you want to use something like yarn just to practice with so that you're not using expensive tarred bank line just to learn that's okay too but once you make a net to use in the field you'll probably want to go with something like this number 12 bank line all right i have here my net gauge i'm using a three 0.0 net gauge that means that it's a three inch mesh on the net and you'll see that um, with this this is a one and a half inch gauge and so when we make our mesh it'll actually be double the gauge and again when you see the process that'll make sense this in my opinion is the very best of net needles or net shuttle some people call them you'll see different types but this is the norwegian net needle that comes from self-reliance outfitters I don't want to use any other net needle. Once you use this, you find out just how good this really is. As you're unwinding your cordage, you have the little pinchers here at the tip, and you can easily just pop cordage out, but it holds it in place. But when you're ready to release some cordage, that thing just pops right out. So in my opinion, by far the best net needle available. Again, Self-Reliance Outfitters, I'll leave a link down below in the description box. You'll need one carabiner for this method of throwing a net. And then just a cutting tool. I'm using my Pathfinder Huntsman there because it has the little scissors. Those come in really handy when you have to trim the tags off with this little fine cordage and stuff. Later on, I'm going to show you two other accessories, a one-inch key ring and also a little piece of paracord. That's project specific but for making a net really all you need is the cordage to gauge the needle and in this case a carabiner all right with all that said let's get started the first step in constructing our net is to establish our first mesh loop and to do that I'm simply going to wrap my cordage around the mesh gauge twice and I'm going to tie that off with a square knot and doing that will give me one full mesh so just an overhand knot and then we're going to cross back in the opposite direction, creating a square knot. I know that's hard to see, but literally a square knot, reef knot, is just two overhand knots tied against each other. Just like that. Pull it down nice and tight. All right, at that point, I'm simply going to slip this loop off the mesh gauge. When I open it up, that'll be one full mesh. I pull it tight, make sure that thing's cinched good. It is. I'm going to use my handy huntsman there with the scissors snip that tail off now I'm simply going to hook my carabiner into that loop with that we'll be ready to start throwing our net all right so I've gone ahead and connected my carabiner here and the only thing I have so far is that original mesh which we created by double wrapping our mesh gauge to get started on throwing the net what I'm going to do is lay my mesh gauge right here on the line and I'm going to take my net needle and come up through that original loop. And in doing that, I'm going to trap 
the mesh gauge as you see here. Essentially what we have at that point is a rope tackle, sort of like when you make a ridge line. Before I cinch anything down, that original knot, the square knot that we tied, we made that original mesh. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just sliding it up so it's about halfway on that original loop that gets it up and out of our way so that now we can create, redo that. I'm trying to reach around the camera here and give you guys a good view of this and it's quite difficult. All right, so now what we have is that rope tackle and we have the other side, the far side of that mesh. What you wanna do is pinch that in place and we have to throw our line over top of our hand. And now when I feed that through, I have to make sure that it comes through that loop and now cinch that thing down really tight. You can see right here and I want to keep pressure and it's going to bind and create basically a square knot. And that's our second mesh. So our original and our second. Now at that point, I simply lay my net gauge here and I'm going to feed this thing again back through that same mesh and we're in that same situation. We have what looks like a rope tackle right here and we have the other side of the mesh. All I have to do is let a little line out from my net needle, throw it over my hand, hence the name throwing a net, and now feed the net needle right up through that. Once again, you want to keep that line tight because so I want that half hitch to form on top of the other half hitch. If you let it slip over and go to the bottom, go below that original half hitch, you'll get a slip knot. So it's really important just to keep things tight. If you do that, you won't have a problem with this. Now we just keep repeating the same process. And in doing so, we're creating the depth of our net. Once again, pinch that thing in place. You can see we have three lines. One that looks like that rope tackle. And we have the other end of the mesh. Pinch it in place. Throw the loop over our hand, come behind and feed it right back through the loop. Again, pull that line tight and cinch it down. And we just continue this process. I want to make a net that's 12 meshes long. So I'm just going to continue that process until I have that. And then I'll show you the next step from there. All right, so as you can see, I've continued that same process now until I have my 12 meshes. You can see two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. What I'm going to do is connect all the top meshes now to my carabiner. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take hold of this and I'm going to fold this over. And now I'm going to fold under. And then I'm going to fold over, under, over, and under. And now with that, I have all the top mesh loops. And I'm simply going to connect those to my carabiner, just like this. Now at this point, it always looks a little chaotic, but I'm going to connect it back to the table and you'll be able to see how we're going to go from here to make the width of our net. All right, let's get it hooked back up. All right, so I've got my carabiner hung back up and I've sorted out my cordage here. And you can see pretty clearly now what's going on. I have one, two, three, four, five, six bottom mesh holes to work from. And so now I'm just going to continue to repeat that process, working my way from left to right. Once I go from one side to the other, I'll simply reverse my carabiner and I'll continue to work left to right. Me being right-handed, I'm always working from left to right. If you're left-handed, you may want to flip-flop on that. It doesn't matter which side you go from. But for me, again, it's comfortable to start on the left and work my way right. All right, so let's get started on this next part of this process so we can create the length of our net. All right, so at this point, it's basically just repeating the process that we've already been doing. I'm simply going to lay the mesh gauge down on my line, take my net needle, come up through that first mesh on this row. Again, I want to make sure I trap the mesh gauge. All right, and again, it gives us that little rope tackle. And then the other side of the mesh. At this point, I want to pinch that in place throw my line over top of my hand, basically going clockwise. And then I'm gonna feed the net needle right back up through that loop. Again, it's important that it goes through the loop that we threw because that will cinch down and become our hitch. 
Now what just happened right there is a good learning experience is it slipped over top. If you see this came over top of that. If I bind that down right now, it's going to create a slip knot. So what I'm going to do before I even pull that is undo this. That's what I was talking about before. You got to keep that thing really tight so it doesn't come down past your rope tackle. If it ever jumps over the rope tackle like it just did right there, this mesh is going to be all slippery. So I'm going to undo that and we'll come back and redo this once more. All right, so that was a quick fix. So once again, we just come up through that first loop on our second row. Make sure we trap the net gauge. Cinch that down. There's our rope tackle right there. Just going to pinch that in place. Again, throw the loop over top of the wrist. I'm trying to do this again at this odd angle. I can move through this so much faster when I'm not doing it like this. And cinch that thing down. Now at this point, we're going to come down here to our next mesh on the line and just come right up through there. Notice I didn't even pull that next mesh off of the net needle. We'll keep this whole row up there and just keep right on trucking. So I pinch that down. Again, throw the line, feed it up through that hole, make sure it goes through this one too. Cinch it tight, and there we go. Pick up the third mesh. Once you get going on this, it does get easier. It's just getting that net established in the beginning is a little fiddly. Once you get going, it becomes very smooth. And you can start to see your net forming too. So again, pull that thing tight. Let's slip it down the line. It goes right into place. Pick up that next, next mesh. Cinch it down. Again, throw my line. Come up through. Make sure it goes through that loop as well. Cinch it down nice and tight. Pops right into place. Pick up that uh, fifth loop, I think it is. Right? Cinch it down. Again, throw the loop. Come right back up through that. I'm going to make sure we pick up that loop. Again, that's just a function of me doing this at a weird angle. And now our sixth loop here, the last one, pull it down. Again, we have that what looks like a rope tackle. Once more, throw our line over, come right back up through, and cinch it down. Now at this point, we have a full row. All we need to do is undo the carabiner. We'll simply flip it over just like that. Remove the mesh, and now you can see what we have. Again, my net needle is now back on the left-hand side. And so now I can start that same process over again and keep giving myself row after row. So pretty simple the way we're doing that. All right, so I even completed one extra row here, but this is my net, what it looks like right now, still attached up here to the carabiner. And for the particular project that I made this for, I'm going to keep it on the carabiner right now and I'll show you what to do with that. So let me pull this off my attachment here to the table. We'll lay it out on the table and take a look at the net. All right, so you can see my net all laid out here. I haven't opened it up yet to take a look at it. But before I do, what I have here is just a little metal key ring. This is like a little snap key ring. You can find these things all over any department store in the office section usually. And what I'm going to do is before I remove my carabiner, I'm just going to run that end of my net through this little key ring. And this is like an inch in diameter, maybe a little less. Okay. So now I have that in place. And so I can remove the carabiner from the net and I have the ends bound here with that little ring. Right, and that's going to serve us for our project that we're going to make. All right, so now you can see what I got there. I'm going to open that up. I just need to cut the end so I can detach this from my net needle. I'm going to really cinch that knot nice and tight. All right, and then just use my Pathfinder Huntsman here, a little scissors to snip that end off. All right, now we're done with our net needle. We're done with our net gauge, done with our carabiner. The last step on this project is I'm going to grab a piece of paracord and we're going to come back through the ends of this and create a cinch for our net. All right, so what I have here is just a piece of 550 paracord. It's probably about four feet in length, give or take. And what I'm going to do with that cord is I'm going to lace it through my net. I'm going to start right here on this back corner. It doesn't really matter which corner. And I'm just going to go under, over, 
under, over, under, over, under, and out. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is just pull that paracord up here on the table so it'll stop sliding down. All right. So in this case, we had an over. So now I'm going to come down to the key ring. I'm going to go under and then over. So this one's going to be over top, under, and then over on this loop. You want to be careful to make sure you're going only on the outside loops of your net. So the very outside loops only. And again, under, and then over, and then back under through the key ring there. I think I got all those right. All right, now I just need to complete the same step on the other side. Just come back here to this back corner. And this one went under, so we're going to come under that corner and then over. I know this is probably difficult to see, guys, and I apologize. Looking at net on a screen is a little bit challenging. Again, just under, over, under, over. Again, make sure you're only dealing with the outsides of your net. Over this one. And then once again, we come back under our key ring right there. So I'm just feeding it back through the key ring. And I'm going to take up the slack there with our net. Okay, now our net has a complete border. What I want to do is come down here to the ends of my paracord and just kind of make sure they're both even like that. So both of them together. And then I'm going to just tie an overhand knot. You could always trim this off, but I don't like to cut my cordage, and I know that at some point I may reclaim this piece of cord and use it for something else. And so now, I'm just kind of even that thing out. Kind of pull the cord snug. I'm going to come down here a little closer to the net and do one more overhand knot. Just kind of neaten things up a little bit. And now, we have a net that we can open or cinched closed like this which is really cool because now we can use it for a lot of different things. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to use this as a little improvised trap to catch birds or small mammals. The cool thing is, now that we have that cinch cord around, I can cinch this net up over top of a piece of gear, be it a water bottle or whatever we want, and now I can carry that thing, attach it to my pack by a piece of cord or whatever, and it's just cinched up around it. Let's say you caught a fish or a couple fish and you wanted to carry them back to camp. This way you can just cinch them up in this net and hang on to them. You could also use that as a way to keep them down in the water, keep them fresh, keep them alive. And just put them in a net like this and cinch them up. Really, the use of a net for the woodsman is only limited by your imagination. There's so many things you could do with this. Of course, you can scale the net up for larger purposes or you can have a little net like this which is just handy for all kinds of little things just fun to play with this it's a good skill to own and uh, this is a great little project for you to get started with net making and again this is a primer for our next video all right at some point in making your net you're going to run into this scenario where you run out of cordage on your net needle when you have just a few inches left of cordage you want to just come in and snip this off your net needle all right so we have that last bit of line here. What we're going to do now is reload the net needle with more cordage and then we're going to square knot the new line to the old. All right, so now that I have more cordage loaded onto the needle, what I'm going to do is take the end of the new cord and the end that's remaining on my net and simply wrap those two around each other once just like this right now i'm going to come on top of that on the opposite side and again interlock you can see what i have there this will be our square knot or reef knot we we'll simply pull those two together nice and tight and now all we have to do is once again trim those ends off and we're back in business. From there, just continue the process of making our net. 
All right, so I hope you guys have enjoyed taking a look at how to make or technically throw a net. And I will tell you, this has been one of the more challenging things to film. Obviously, with that little cordage and those little fine nuances that are happening when you're making the net, it's kind of hard to capture that on a video. But I hope this came across. I will refer you to David Canterbury's channel, Rope Clinic number 5. He did a great video where he shows this exact same skill. So if mine is hard to see or you don't quite get it, I recommend to you to go watch his video as well. And that will definitely help kind of secure how to do this for you. The reason I showed this video is because in my next video, we're going to take this little 12 by 12 net and use it in improvising a trap out in the woods. So I wanted to share with you that. And um, between my video and hopefully Dave's, it'll make sense. And if you're interested, you'll be able to make yourself one of these little nets. Of course, a net is a useful thing. It can be used for many purposes, only limited by your imagination. So I want to thank you guys for your time, interest. Don't forget, there's always links down in the description box if you're interested in all things black hat bushcraft, uh, where to get gear and stuff like that. It's all down there if you're interested. And of course, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber, and I hope you'll come back often. That next video with this net will be coming really soon. So you guys take care, be safe, and until the next one, God bless.